Hey guys, it's Dave from Opus Gangster, rocking a new look for today's episode. And so, don't we all love Linux? Particularly Ubuntu? Well, what if I told you there's a way to run Ubuntu on your Android phone the easy way? By easy, I mean you won't have to go through flashing your kernels or pushing WiMAX or Wi Fi drivers to your phone. So, in order to get us working, there are a few prerequisites in which you'll need. First, you'll need a rooted Android phone. Next, you'll need two apps available within the Android market, both for free. The first is called Android VNC. The other app is called Terminal Emulator. And finally, you will need at least 3.5 GB of free space on your SD card. So once you have all that, you're ready to get started. Okay? Let's get this started. So just to show you, here are the files that you need to download. The ubuntu.image file, the ubuntu.sh file, and the ubuntu.sh.md5 file. Be aware that the ubuntu image file is large and will take a little long to download. Step 2. Now that you have your SD card mounted, I want you to create a folder in it called Ubuntu. That way, when you put your files onto your SD card, it will be very organized and easy to follow. So as you see, I already have a folder here called Ubuntu, and inside of it, I have already transferred the IMG image, or the image file, the SH file, and the MD5 file. If you haven't done so yet, take your files that you downloaded from that site and transfer it to the Ubuntu folder that you created on your SD card. Since they are rather large files, they are going to take some time, so just give it a few seconds or a few minutes and be patient. Okay. Now that your files are transferred to your SD card, it's time to open them up and run Ubuntu. First things first, you want to open up Terminal Emulator. Now if you don't have it, you can download it free from the Android market. So I'm going to go here and open it up. Once inside Terminal Emulator, you should see a screen that looks like this. And so you have that. So first I want you to type in SU. That's going to grant you super user permission and then hit enter and then it's going to say super user permission has been granted next we'll navigate to the folder that you put your Ubuntu files now if you didn't do it the way I did it and you put your Ubuntu files somewhere else then just navigate to that folder but for everyone else who did it the way I did it just copy what I type in so I'm going to type in CD SD card no capitals forward slash Ubuntu and hit enter. Then if everything goes well, you should just go to the next line and see the hash line again and yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to open up the sh file. So we're going to say sh space Ubuntu dot sh and hit enter. And then you'll probably get this little warning that comes up and it's going to say please wait while booting uh, image file. And yeah. So if you got to this point, that's great. Now if you got an error, make sure you typed in everything correctly. Also make sure you put the sh file in with the Ubuntu image file in the same folder because that is important to have. Okay, so once you get to the screen, now for some of you it may boot up right away. For me, I just went right to the... Um, Android VNC and opened it. So I don't think this is ever going to change. It's just going to stay like this. So if you get to this screen, it's running. Ubuntu is running right now. You can't see it, but it's running. So now let's open it up so you actually can see it. So once again, I'm going to go to Android VNC. And if you do not have it, you can download it free from the Android market. Go find Android VNC. Also, any VNC viewer will work. So you don't really need Android VNC. But I'm just going to use that since everybody knows what that is, and easiest thing. Okay. So once in Android VNC, um, you see the connection and everything else. You can ignore nickname, the password, you're going to type in Ubuntu, no capitals. So I already have to set in, but I'm going to type it in again. There we go. So password Ubuntu. 
Okay, address, keep it to localhost. If you don't have it, type in localhost for your address right there because you're connecting locally to your phone. For port, now here's the little thing here. For some people, they just kept port 5900 and it connected. Others, like for me, I actually got rid of the port number and it connected fine. So, if you're on another VNC, try doing that. Like if you try to connect and get issues, try removing the port number and just clicking connect. Just because, like I said, for me, that worked the first time I did this. Um, so, but if it works for you, keep the 5900 and keep the 5900. Okay, lastly, go down here and make sure your color format is a 24-bit color for BBP. For, yeah, BPP. <laughs> so once you have all that up and ready, just hit connect. And wow, here it is. Up and running. Right in Ubuntu. And once again, we got, if you have errors or it doesn't connect, try changing your port number to 5900 or removing the port number altogether. And um, just try playing around and see how you can get it. So let's see Ubuntu. This is actually a full working version of Ubuntu. I wonder if I'm saying it wrong. It could be Ubuntu. Oh well. Anyway, it's a full working version of Ubuntu, meaning that you have your software center, your downloads, and actually Wi-Fi and, um, well yeah, Wi-Fi does work on this, so you can get internet on here by just going up to Firefox and holding that and uh, let's try to click it. Yeah, clicking is very difficult with Android VNC. There we go. Open. There we go. So, um, yeah, Firefox does work because um, you do have your internet on here from your 3G and your Wi-Fi and you don't have to worry about pushing drivers to your phone or anything like that. And you still have your phone's functionality so this didn't take over your phone. Um, oh my god, let's see if I get Firefox to open. One thing, navigating is very difficult on Android VNC. It's very difficult. There we go, and open. So, I'm gonna give it some time. It's really not that slow. Sometimes it is, but, okay, here we go. Now Firefox. Oh, I opened it, opened it up twice. So, here we go. As you see, I'm in Firefox right now. And, type in some in Google search. Right up the keyboard. Uh, let's type in Android. Not type in. There we go. Hit search. There we go. And what? Look. Ta-da! I'm on a market. Isn't that amazing? Or what? <laughs> so, like I said, you can navigate. And here you go. I'm on Firefox right now. And I'm on the internet. And looking through this thing. So, I mean, that's pretty much amazing that you have the full functionality of Ubuntu right on your phone right here. And like I said, if you want to download software packages from the Ubuntu Software Center, you can do that and it does run. For those of you thinking about running Wine on here, because if you know Wine allows you to run um, Windows programs, it may or may not work. I've been reading about it and some people say because of the processor on Android is not an uh, same architecture as the processor on a computer. So running Wine may not communicate right with the processor and so it may not work. But hey, it may work. Maybe you can get it to work. Who knows? So, and you have all your other stuff from Ubuntu. You have your office stuff, programming, sounds, windows, and um, basically, if you're familiar with Ubuntu, you can do whatever you want on it. Okay, so now what I like to do is to log out, to actually go to the log out button down here and to log out as if you're the same way you would do it on a computer and log out from there. And see, you can shut down, reboot, and suspend, and you have all those options available to you right here. Just like you would in a desktop version. So this has been Ubuntu on your Android phone, and hope you enjoyed it, and tune in for another galvanizing video.